G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another VB.NET 2013 tutorial project. And today we are going to make a word processor. What you see in front of you is what you're going to get in the end. Very basic, something that's not going to rival Microsoft Office to slight, in the slight I should say. But you're going to be able to save, open, create new ones, do a little bit of editing, insert pictures, and even format some text with some bold italics, underlines, strike throughs, and the size. Excuse me. Moving along. So this is all we're going to do for the moment. And this video is going to be a four-part series. In the first one, we're going to look at just designing the interface and getting everything set up for the programming. In the second video, for just some basic edit menu and things like that. The third video, we're going to look into getting the styles and the size working. And in the fourth video, we're going to bring it all together with the saving, opening, and making new ones. So. Without further ado, let's close this guy here. Let's make a brand new project. And because I always suggest keep your stuff when you're doing programming, we're going to call this word processor. And please make sure you know where it's being saved. All right. Click OK. Whoops. I've already got one called word processor. Let's call it word processor 2. And go new. All right. There's not much we're going to do to the form to set him up initially, but let's have a look at his properties. Starting at the top, the name, let's call him form main. Now, if you followed my video last time, I changed the form border style to fixed. We're not going to do that this time. We're going to allow them to resize it. And then finally, let's set the text to word processor. All right, and that's pretty much it. That's all I want to do, except for the start position. I might put that screen center, because I hate it popping up randomly around the screen. All right, that's the form done. Let's make this guy a little bit bigger. And we're ready to add in all of our objects. Now we're just going to chuck in every object and then we're going to set them up as we go. So let's get our toolbox up, everybody. Let's come up to the search. And I'm going to first of all insert a menu strip. Not a context, a menu strip. Just double click him. And he appears there. He's ready to go. Let's bring in a tool strip. Just double click that guy again. So tool strip, let's add him down here. And you'll notice that the menu in the tool strip have nicely enough stacked for us, which is absolutely brilliant because we don't have to move them, don't have to resize them, nothing. They just sit there and we set them up. The next one that we're going to need is the text box in the middle. Now, we don't actually use a regular text box for this one because with a regular text box, when you set the text to bold, the entire thing becomes bold, not just a little section of it. So what we need for that one is we need a rich text box, which allows us to format text independently and things of that nature. So I'm just going to resize him roughly, not the whole way. And I'll explain why in the next video. We need two more things though before we go any further. We need what's called an open file dialog. And we need a save file dialog. You can almost guess what they are, but I'll explain them in the last video, those two guys there. And you'll notice it didn't add anything to our form when we added the open file dialog and the save file dialog. They actually appeared down the bottom. All right. And that's where they belong, because there's nothing visible until you tell them to occur. But anyway, let's set these guys up, and let's start with the very top menu. These guys are really easy to work with. Now, if you don't know what a menu strip is, well, have a look up here. It's this thing here. It's File, Edit. You click on it. You've got all these menus. You can even have sub-menus and so forth. Okay? And that's what we're going to set up right now. To do so, you simply, where it says Type here, click inside of it. You type in the name of your menu press enter and it creates that button for you. Now notice how when I press alt on the keyboard and it highlights the menu up here, a little underscore appears on them as well. That means if I press that button, so for file, if I press F on the keyboard, the file menu appears and you can see little underscores and all these. These are the shortcuts for those particular buttons. All right? And I explained it ages ago with just regular buttons. You can also do it with menu buttons. So if I just click slowly, one, two, I can rename him. And to get an underscore under the F, what I do is put an ampersand in front of the letter. So you'll see I've put the ampersand in front of the F. It's got a little line under it. That means file, the shortcut is Alt-F to bring that menu up. And I'm going to do the same thing for all of my menus when I go through them. So for new, I'm going to put an ampersand in front of the N. And I'm going to put a, an ampersand in front of the O for open, dot, dot, dot. I'll explain why I put dots in just a moment. Ampersand, save, 
Now, for the save as, I can't put an ampersand in front of the S because I've already got one for save. But the most common one is in front of the A for as. And whoops, I just double clicked. Should not have. I want to quickly rename him with a dot, dot, dot at the end. And what I had next was a little separator, it's called. One of these things here. And to get them is really, really easy. All you do is put a hyphen in there and press enter. That's it. And then we finally had quit. All right, let's quickly get the edit menu going as well. So ampersand edit. And the options were cut, copy, paste, a separator, and then select all. So what I do, I don't like putting the ampersand in front of the C for cut. I like to put it in front of copy. Put it in front of the U. But it's up to you. Uh, 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 anyway, moving on. Ampersand in front of the C. Ampersand in front of the P for paste. A separator, so you put a hyphen. And then finally, select all. Now, it doesn't matter that the shortcut for select all is the same as save, because they're in different main menus. And then finally, we had insert. Not with the bloody apostrophe there. And then we had picture, dot, dot, dot. All right, so I keep putting these dot, dot, dots. What the heck do they signify? What they do signify is that when you press one of those commands, it is going to open up one of these open file dialogs or save file dialog. So you expect something else to pop up. If you click save or you click new, just expect it to occur. So it's a function of sorts. All right, before we go too far, it's always a good idea to set up your shortcuts for these things because a lot of people love their shortcuts. I do especially. So things like... Control N for new file and Control S for save and things like that. So what we're going to do is go through these options and give most of them, well actually we're going to give all of them a shortcut. So let's click on just this button. You'll notice down here in the properties, new tool strip menu item has been selected. And if we scroll down to shortcut key, there it is. We can set it here. So please, when you're setting up your shortcut keys, try to stick to the standards. For new, don't use E or W or something like that. Use N. Use something that's always used by a lot of other programs. That way, your program is a lot more intuitive in what it does. So for the shortcut keys, I'm going to click on the drop down. I'm going to, you've got all these different modifiers you can select. I'm going to select Control. And for the key, we want N. So if you click on something else, you'll see it's just added in Control N. And we're going to go ahead and apply a shortcut key to every single other menu for this. There's a quick little way you can do it. It's not as quick as I'd like, but what you can do, so can, for open, we're going to do Control O. Tick the Control. And what I do with the combo box is I double click him and press the letter O on the keyboard. Click on the next one and do the same thing. Double click S. Save as, the general shortcut for save as, there generally isn't one, but for this case, we're going to go Control Shift S. And then finally, quit. The general one is Alt and F4. Now, that isn't really needed because Alt F4 is a universal shortcut for Windows programs to close, but it's sometimes a nice thing to have. Edit. So if you know your shortcuts well, you should know that Edit is Control X. Copy is Control C. Paste is Control V. Select all is Control A. Insert for picture, let's just do Control P, even though P is usually for print. But anyway, we've got a shortcut on each of our keys because why the hell not? Next one we're going to have to set up is going to take us a little bit longer, and that's the tool strip here because we have to set up all of our individual buttons. If you paid any attention before, I had three buttons, which were new, open, save, I then had a separator. And then I had four more buttons, which were bold, italic, underline, strikeout. And then finally, a drop-down box, which was for the text size. So we need to add all those objects independently. And we can add them here by clicking this drop-down and selecting one of these things here. Or we can do it, I suppose some people consider this a long way. I consider it a bit quicker. If I click on this side button here and click Edit Items, I get a whole new dialog with the properties of each button and all that kind of stuff. Now, I prefer this way personally. It's up to you which one you use. They're exactly the same because here's the drop down of what I would like to add. So the first three was, were all buttons. So I'm just going to go add, add, add. The next one was a separator. So select the separator and then click add. The next four 
couple of buttons again, even though when you click a bold button, it highlights, and when you click it again, it unhighlights, it's still a button, and I'll show you how to do that very, very quickly. So one, two, three, four buttons, and then finally we had a combo box. So not a drop-down button, a combo box. All right, and now we have to do the arduous task of going through every single one of these, setting up the name, setting up the text, setting up the style, but before we do, there's something that I'm missing. You'll see by default, we've got these ugly little pictures that appear here. Okay, and before I had this nice clean new picture and open picture and save picture, they actually came from an icon pack, which is downloadable from the Microsoft website. All right, I'm gonna quickly show you what it looks like. Let me go to documents, image library. This is what you get. And if I go to the icon refresh, I think I got it from uh, actions and PNG, and there are literally hundreds of these things. There's so many of them, okay? And you can get them for free, and I'll put the link inside the description of the video, so you can just click on it and go to download the pack. It's about 250, 280 meg, I think it was, and you get a crap load of icons from Visual Studio 2013 and 2010 as well, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use these pictures on my toolbar. Let me quickly go back and let's start setting up our icons. So if you have to go and download that icon pack and get it unzipped, please pause the video, come back, see us in a couple of minutes, and try and follow us as best you can. Now, I don't like this name, Toolstrip1. I'm going to rename this guy to TS Main for Toolstrip Main, and I'm going to rename each of these buttons by what they are. So this is a Toolstrip button. Well, really, what I'm going to call him is TSB and then I name him after what he's going to do. So he's going to create a new document. So let's go TSB, new. And I'm going to do the exact same thing to all of these, except for the separator, because I'm never going to use that in code. So TSB, open. TSB, save. This one here was TSB, bold. TSB, italic. TSB, underline. TSB, strikeout. And then finally, because it's a tool strip combo box, TSC size. All right, everything's named, and now we have to set them up so they actually look good. So for instance, there are basically, on the new open and save buttons, there's only two things that I'm gonna change about these. I'm gonna change the image from that crappy old little default picture here, and then I'm gonna change the text. And the reason I changed the text is because when the user mouses over these things, the text appears in a little bubble to say what that button is. So if you leave the text as default, it's gonna come up and say that button is tool strip button one. Well, no, it's not, it's new. I'm gonna get rid of the dots, I don't like the dots. So new document, that's probably nicer. All right, to change the image, we just come up here, click on the triple dots next to image, and then you click import. All right, now mine's automatically gone to this folder because I've been here before. What I do is I click on one of these pictures, type in new on the keyboard, and then scroll down a little bit to look for a new file. I reckon that looks very nice. So I'm gonna open that one, click OK, and you can see up here on the left, it's all of a sudden changed the picture, it looks much, much better. So we're gonna do that to the next two buttons. So click on open, change the text to open document, and then change the image. And I'm basically gonna do the same thing. Instead of new this time, I'm gonna type in open. And I like that one. It's quite nice. Click okay. It's up there, ready to go. Let's go to save now. Let's find his picture first. That's brilliant. And then save. Document as the text. All right, if you need to pause the video and catch up, do now, because I'm gonna to continue to the bold italic underline strikeout. We don't need any more pictures. That's all we needed, in fact. So we downloaded 280 meg package just for those. But you can use it in the future. So as for this bold italic underline strike it, I'm just gonna use plain text, okay? So what you do there is you change the display style to text, and you'll see it came up with tool strip button one. I don't want to say that, I just want to say B. And you'll see that already looks a lot better. But there's two more things I'm gonna change. The first one is the font. I'm actually going to change it so it is bold. So it looks a bit like what it's going to do. There you go. So it's a bold B. It looks a lot nicer. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so this button automatically highlights itself when they click it. 
and then when I click it, I get it on highlights. All right, and that's controlled. If you've watched my checkbox video, it's controlled by the checked property. Now, if I change it here, you'll see it highlights the button. If I click it again, double click, I should say, it unhighlights it. Now, there's a lovely little behavior down here called check on click. That if I set that to true, automatically that button is going to highlight and unhighlight when I click it. All right, and we're going to have to do those things again. So we're going to have to go text, change the font style to whatever it is, then change the text itself, and then change the check on click for each one of these buttons. So let's do that nice and quick. So italic, it's going to be text, font, let's make it italic. The actual text, we go to capital I, and then check on click. All right, next. Now, um, underline comes over here on the left. Change it to a U. Check on click. Last one. Lots of double clicking here. All right. Done. For this last guy, for TSC size, we're only going to change one thing about him, or two things, I should say. The first one is his width. I don't like how wide he is. He's really, really wide. And so what I'm going to do is come down to size, change his width to 75, so it looks a lot neater. And the second thing we need to do with any combo box, you have to add in items. So when they click on the drop down, you can see all the different items that they can select. That is called items. Pretty difficult, eh? Hey? If you just click on the triple dot, we can enter in as many items as we want, one per line. So if we want the smallest size to be like size 2, then that'll be the first option in the box. Then size 4, 6, 8, 10. And then I start jumping numbers to make it a little bit bigger. 18, 20, 22, 26. And now we're going to jump massively. 32, um, let's say 38, 46, 58, 60... Something, 68 sounds good, 72. It's entirely up to you what numbers you put in this box, but I suggest you don't put too many because the user's actually going to be able to type in their own numbers as well. So just bear that in mind. So don't put too many options for the sizes. This is actually done. We can click OK. And because I'm a big fan of testing, we should go through and make sure everything is set up and looks nice and neat. So let's do that now. Whoop, let's just move that accidentally. All right, so these buttons are nice and clicky. You can see it says new document, open document, save document. This is B. <laughs> we can change that if we really want to, but see when I click them, they highlight, and they click them again, they unhighlight, and the drop down box has got all of my different sizes. Okay, and all these options are there. They're clickable, they just don't do anything. This is it for the first video. What I suggest you do, if you'd like to put any more buttons in there or put your own little moniker on everything that's going on, I suggest you do that right now because the next video we're going to start doing some of the programming. So thanks for watching everybody. See you in part two.